Всем привет, и добро пожаловать на мой канал. This is my new oil painting I'm currently working on. And today we have Yaroslava from Russia. She is our guest star today. I'm so excited. In this video, I'll be talking about my favorite way to start oil painting. So let's get going then. So as I said before in the previous video, you can start oil painting in different ways. For beginners, I suggest just trace it. It's super convenient. That's what I did in Portrait of Yeva. There is nothing wrong with tracing. And this is important. Just because you're tracing, it doesn't mean you're unprofessional. People say silly things like, you're not a true artist if you're tracing. Well, that's stupid, alright? Ignore this nonsense and focus on learning or painting. But there's actually a good reason not to trace. The problem is that some colors in the painting are transparent. And if you're like me, doing these thin layers using opaque paint doesn't really help. It can be really hard to cover up the pencil marks. This is why I did the drawing faintly in Portrait of Yeva. And when I paint over it, some of the graphite blends together with my paints and disappears. So the other easy option for you is by creating. But once again, if you do it with pencil, then don't do a super obvious thick grid, because it could be hard to cover up. The safer approach is to paint it freehand. This is great if you're an advanced artist, you have developed your sixth sense, you've opened your third eye or something, and perhaps your spidey senses. <laughs> but what if you're not a Shaolin monk or a spider man? And you want to use the grid system, but you don't want to use graphite. So here comes my solution. You do what I call a simplified grid. I'm not sure if that's a thing, but I like the sound of that. So it's a simplified grid. So what you can do is, with your paint, you divide the canvas into nine boxes. Three rows, three columns. Before you ask, no. It's not still good, guys. <laughs> this is also great for building up your composition. If you ever heard of Rule of Third, uh, this is similar to that. But, as you can see here, I don't really do the Rule of Third thing. What I do here is I just put some kind of crosshair on a face, and then I measure the facial features from my crosshair. Always from my crosshair. Everything here revolves around this crosshair. By dividing the picture into smaller parts, it becomes easier to measure and spot the mistakes they may have. Is this accurate? Well, I'll be honest with you, not so much compared to tracing, but I work with many layers anyway. So remember, oil painting is forgiving. Every mistake can always be corrected later. And in case you don't realize, I only use one color here, and that is burnt amber. This is one of the fast drawing pigments. And to thin that paint, I use mineral spirit. That's how I get the value variation. Sometimes people say that this technique looks like watercolor, and yes, that's exactly how I do it in the painting here. so it looks like this is too much of mineral spirit, but this is totally fine. This mineral spirit evaporates quickly. So what you see here is I'm using cotton bud to wipe out some of the paint. This is a great way to erase mistakes. So if I want it to be darker, I add some paints, 
and to make it lighter, I lift it up. I work back and forth until I get the placement correct. I try to be as close as I can to my reference picture before I move on to the color layer. And later you will see me removing the crosshair with this technique as well. It's not the importance really to remove the crosshair, but it served its purpose and it's kind of distracting having a crosshair like this. Well, in case the client wants to see my progression. <laughs> and I'm not going to get crazy with details, etc. You can do it if you want to. But once the underpainting is readable, I'll stop and start my first color layer. Right, so my brown underpainting is done. Of course, this still looks bad. So here I am doing the first color layer. So the goal of my underpainting here is just to map out the placement of the facial features and the composition. This will help me tremendously in this color layer stage. I don't have to think about the placement anymore. I only need to deal with colors. Of course, I still need to double check my measurements every now and then. But most of it has been dealt with. And like I said before, you need to do this if you don't want to use graphite and you don't want to trace or do gridding. Plus, I think you'll agree with me that working with just one paint is easier than working with full color right away. Other than that, it helps build my shadow. So it requires less glazing for the shadow. And this underpainting, because it's so thin, it dries overnight anyway. So for me, really, there's no reason not to do it. You can also do some combination, say you trace the drawing with pencil and then you do the value sketch, that's also an option. So really there are many ways you can start with painting. Also I forgot to mention, I love turning my canvas before I start my painting. I use burnt umber thinned down with mineral spirit. Sometimes it's called imprimatura or turning a canvas. This isn't mandatory, but I love doing it as it helps me see values more accurately.
Okay, so this is for today. I already did the skin tone. Of course, this isn't looking perfect just yet. Some areas still look wonky, and I admit, I ran out of paints for the hands, so the color looks off. It is an easy fix. <laughs> I'm gonna set this aside for now, and I'll continue this painting in the next video. Bugger!